Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, building a complete ship start to finish. And this is starting to look quite ship-like actually, it's got big turrets, it's got smaller turrets, it's got a superstructure, it has a spinny thing on top, which as we all know, all good ships need a spinny thing on top. Uh, but we're not quite done yet, so last time we did lambs, we did a arguably not put exactly optimized but still a decent enough lamb system to deal with small stuff and moving on with the active defenses we're moving on to shields now there are two kinds of energy shield in from the depths one of which is you need to plan out ahead of time uh, with your craft you need to essentially before you even start building your craft you need to think about where they're going to go and the other one uh, is one of the last things you should add. So, those types respectively are, if you hop over to the defense section, uh, ring shields and planar shields, or shield projectors. Planar shield projectors, some people call them planar shields, some people call them shield projectors. Other people just refer to them as shields, because, spoiler alert, these are the good ones, and ring shields are kind of crap. So, let me explain. So, with ring shields, what these things do, let's just get our ship up and out of the water, let's just arrange this right, uh, this uh, ring shields buff the armor class of blocks in the vehicle. So what this does is you make a ring with them. Let's just turn off block connections, that, and that, and that, and that, and we have the most basic kind of ring shield. So, um... Do, 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 do. This ring shield, because it's orientated uh, essentially right to left uh, with the uh, area in between it, is buffing the armor of blocks on the left and the right of the vehicle. And if you go over here, you'll see that the uh, blocks on uh, the left and right of the vehicle are boosted from, well, in this case, this is a metal block, an uh, offset metal block. It is boosted from 40 to 41.7. That's all right, isn't it? Uh, you'll see here that this stops. Uh, you'll see that this is not granting any kind of armor boost uh, to blocks on the top or blocks on the bottom. Let's see, it is adding to these, but right over here, right on the very front of the vehicle, ooh, it actually is. Interesting. It is not boosting this block right here because it's technically enclosed all around. So yeah, ring shields, that's what they do. Here's the problem with them. Uh, a, um, you need to have space inside your vehicle. You don't want to stick them out on deck like this, of course, because they're very not durable, fragile, so to speak, and they're also uh, volatile. So let's just turn this off. And if I was to say be very, very silly, and have my ring shield here. There are cunning ways to use them, by the way. I'm not a huge fan of shields in general, but I'm especially not a fan of ring shields because uh, you'll see uh, there is a, in the UI down there, or the, the HUD, uh, charged with a stupid amount of energy, volatile if pipes damaged. Uh, how much damage are we talking about here? Well, let's turn off repairs and uh, from the pipes, it has now put a hole uh, straight through uh, our entire ship. Uh, these things actually make better improvised uh, weapons than they do anything else. If I do... Let's see what happens here. If I do that... Yeah, you'll see that's gone through... Alright, it hasn't actually punched all the way through a turret, uh, but it came pretty damn close. In fact, yeah, not great. And you can imagine if you accidentally orient a ring shield inside your craft uh, that is pointing at something uh, squishy and vulnerable, like, say, your AI compartment, your ammo storage, or even, like, at a turret block or something like that, um, you're going to have problems. So you need to think ahead of time where these things are going to fire that devastating particle beam should they get damaged. And it's not should they get damaged, it's when. Always be pessimistic when designing your craft. It's not if they get blown up, it's when they get blown up what goes first and if something goes first will it take other things out with them so we're not using ring shields uh for this particular design uh, arguably there is room for them 
just in the open cavities uh, of this uh, craft. However, we're not doing that because you can't use both kinds of shields uh, simultaneously. So you can see here, let's see, shield projectors are turned off if a shield generator exists on the, on the vehicle that cannot coexist. So you, cannot, you have to choose between ring shields and planar shields. I'm not entirely sure why this is. Uh, it, like, we'll get to a possible reason in a moment, but shield projectors. These are generally more useful uh, than ring shields, if only because uh, they are not volatile. When they get damaged, they don't damage other blocks, and all they do is uh, there is a chance, not a certainty, a chance that they reflect uh, shells, so that's specifically uh, advanced cannon shells and cram shells, uh, there's a chance that they reflect them away, and also they reduce the uh, armor penetration of lasers passing through them and reduce the damage of plasma uh, projectiles passing through them. So they're pretty much like they play, they reduce the incoming damage of pretty much everything except particle cannons and missiles. So they're actually pretty useful, and in fact, with the introduction of plasma they're even more useful. So, you can see this is only a strength 1 shield, it's got um, a minimum uh, projectile uh, reflection chance of about 5%, so basically one out of every 20 shells uh, that hits the shield like f like directly, dead on, uh, will be bounced away. It's got a maximum reflect chance of 10%, so if it's hitting it almost at like a, a flat angle, so it's like hitting at a very steep angle in the shield, Maximum chance is about 10%, so twice as good. Um, 1 in 10 shells will bounce. Uh, plasma damage is reduced to 92.5%, which is a big deal because plasma can do a lot of damage. A big plasma uh, glob, so to speak, uh, can easily do like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of damage. So even a strength 1 shield can reduce that to the point where it goes from critically injuring your ship to... Um, well, it goes from outright destroying your ship to just critically injuring it, which can be a difference. Uh, the smoke strength equivalent is to 100, because we'll get to smoke emitters later. Uh, but, this strength one shield reduces the armor penetration of lasers to 64.6. So, shield projectors are very, very good at stopping, uh, at reducing the damage that lasers do to you. And this is also quite important for fast craft, uh, because I believe smoke emitters are still not so... Uh, effective on a vehicle that's moving very quickly. Don't quote me on that, that might have changed, I will double check that before I do the episode on smoke. So yeah, these are all around actually kind of useful. This is random, by the way, so uh, the reflection chance, these are essentially random dice rolls, uh, which is why I'm not tremendously fond of these, but I've been warming up to them recently because there are certain kinds of projectile uh, that are very difficult to stop. You can't really stop them with armor, you can't evade them, so that's things like plasma shots, which can move very fast and do a lot of damage, and don't care one bit about armor, because they have an armor penetration value of 100 by default, and, especially, and also railgun shells, which can just punch lengthways through a lot of, like, big scary crafts. So, shoot projectors are pretty much your only port of call to have any chance of stopping them. And a strength 1 shield isn't that impressive, but if you scale this up a little bit, a strength 10 shield is a bit of a different story. So, you'll see this is charging up to get to maximum strength. Uh, they do take a while, and they can get weakened by certain things, like APS disruptor shells. Uh, you'll see here that the minimum reflection chance is 20%, so a strength 10 shield... One out of every five projectiles on average will bounce off it, and at very steep angles, 40% of it uh, will bounce off, so that's about two out of every five. And if those are particularly big nasty shells, that can make a real difference. It can mean the difference between uh, your turret cap getting ripped off completely and it surviving long enough to cripple the enemy, which is actually kind of good. Uh, plasma damage is reduced to 70%. Again, uh, plasma can have very big scary numbers, so, a 30% reduction is actually kind of a big deal. Uh, smoke strength equivalent, equivalent to 1000, and laser AP reduced to 30%. So, to compare uh, with our laser here, uh, this laser over here 
let's see here we have to drop down here where are you so you're here with this squirt laser uh, this is 41.1 ap so uh dropping it by oh 90 percent let's just do a little bit quick math so what's it 41.1 41.1 uh times point one so it's uh, basically dropped down to ah interesting wait a minute let's double check my math again <laughs> okay let's see later ap reduced to 30 percent wow i already forgot the numbers so 30 percent of that so clear that 41.1 times 0.3 equals 12.3 so 12.3 AP does roughly one quarter damage uh, to metal. So that is a huge difference. Whereas uh, 41.1 does full damage to metal, which means that like it goes uh, this shield here, if this laser shooting through it, it goes from tearing through uh, metal beams like it's no problem to basically just scratching them. So shield protectors, worthwhile investment, uh, if for lasers, if nothing else, but they have other benefits as well. So, we're using these. Man, that was a lengthy introduction. And you'll notice I've already got a shield projector over here, uh, over on this cram turret. It just kind of comes standard with the prefab I was using here. So, I'm just going to set this uh, so it's actually visible, uh, like so, so we can see it. So, that one's covered. Uh, the plan is, uh, because uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt and also a waste of energy, uh, to stick shields literally all over your craft you want to put them where they get shot at or like to be more accurate uh, put them where shots are likely uh, to pass through them and so the shield can actually do something about it so we're going to hop on to our APS turret here and we're going to put not one two shields in here so let's see how do we want to do that that is a metal beam that goes like so so, and we just got to work out. Yeah, one, two, three. That's twelve. And we're going to just sneaky, sneaky. Oh, hello. Okay, let's go here. Whoop. Right. So it's not a great idea to uh, have your shields touching metal if you can possibly help it, but. Uh, this is kind of an improvised uh, shield setup, so let's go here. Really should have remembered that. Okay, let's just do this. Apply color to all shield settings. We're going to set that to maximum range. For now, we're going to set it to strength. Strength 5 is a nice compromise. So, width. so there we have our shield, and we're going to adjust it um, so we have a nice steep angle on the front. So gonna be something like that yes there we go and stacking shields by the way let's just swap the azimuth angle of this thing um, stacking shields like this has uh, pros and cons so reflection chance roll is done once for each projectile this means stacking shields with the same angle does not improve reflection chance so you can't just layer shields endlessly uh, that used to be something that worked in this game. It doesn't really work anymore. And um, only the strongest shield counts for laser AP and plasma damage reduction. For lasers hitting both shields and smoke clouds, uh, the smoke equivalent of the strongest shield is added to the smoke. So smoke and shield stacks, uh, but shields don't really stack with each other that much. So what having multiple shields overlapping like this is, is improving the chance of a shell uh, deflecting uh, because it's improved in the chance that it'll hit at least one shield at a very steep angle. So, we're covering our bases here. And because this is on a turret, it is uh, turning to face the enemy, which is very, very handy. I'm a big fan of that. So, we've got our shields here on the, uh, on the turret. I actually want to change that a little bit. I want it to cover the, uh, the cheek of the turret, so to speak. Because you can see it, that is technically exposed. I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm just gonna do that. Let's let's make that 30 degrees. So you can see there, it's covering a little bit more of the side of the turret, and there's not this kind of gap there. So let's go 
there as well and swap azimuth angle and we're gonna control that because that is handy dandy all right so now the laser turret um once you get past the habit of slapping uh shield projectors absolutely everywhere unnecessarily it gets a lot easier to use them so let's where should we stick this i want to stick this Oh, there's a surge protector right here for absolutely no reason. That's nice. That's three. That's four. Let's do that. And let's just stick a three meter. I'm going to stick a wedge in here just, just to hedge my bets for some spaced armor. And, whoop, and we're going to... Let's see. No, no. We need to invert this one. Admittedly, it would also be a good idea to have shields pointing angling up as well uh, but all right so now doo, doo, doo. so now we have shields covering and this is quite nice coverage because it's like the uh, laser is completely behind there which is quite handy all right and now we're gonna do the same uh, for this particle cannon turret we're gonna have to figure out where exactly this should live so we got where should you live? This is a great big lump of metal, so... So there we have a solid beam. And so we are going to... Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Let's do... Let's do... Let's see, where's this? Let's do right here because that means the particle cannon is still kind of covered. Incidentally, if you're thinking this is optimal shield place up, place up, placement, it probably isn't, uh, but it is decent enough, and that should do the trick. As ever, keep an eye on the comment section. Uh, the comment section of my videos are thankfully full of helpful people who are eager to tell me if I'm doing things wrong, which is, Fan Dabby Dozy. Okay, let's go here. Beautiful, beautiful. In fact, this now is quite cunning uh, because uh, it's actually helping cover the uh, the rear of the turret in front of it, which is quite handy. So, I have decided I don't like uh, how this fan turret's shield is. Just one shield? No, we want consistency. So we've got a heavy armor beam. I'm just going to swap that out for something like that. And now we've got that, which is a bit of a problem. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, let's swap that. We actually have a gap in here. Interesting. We had a gap here the whole time. So let's do that, and we're just going to have a slightly different... Uh, let's do range over there, and... The opposite like so we just need to I'm going to change the color of the shield for a second just so I can see what it is range and angle is going to be very flat there we go this uh, it is quite a handy way of getting shields to uh, do what you want them to is by uh, having them have a very short projection range but you just angle them so they're covering things which are a little bit of a way away. So let's go here. I hold it all. Ignore this for now. It's not important. So let us do that. Also, yes, going to completely redo this cram cannon. That upward shield isn't actually doing that much. So, right, I've changed my mind again. Uh, we're going to figure out something different here. We are, in fact, going to. Ooh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Nobody panic, I have an idea. So this guy is set to 14. And so this guy has an angle. Ooh, hello. And this is where it's really handy to know what orientation you're setting your stuff at. Okay. Whoop. And azimuth angle. Okay, nope, it's the other one I want to do. Azimuth angle. Whoop. There we go. Kind of. Hold on. Let's see here. Is this what we want? No, it isn't, actually. No, it isn't. I've gotten my angles confused. Interesting. 
Interesting. I'm going to set that to 10. And then I'm going to set this to negative 10. Aha! Uh -huh, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. It's going to look funny no matter what. Not as smart as I thought I was. <sighs> Life is hard. Okay, let's just do that thing we always do. Do that, and we're just going to go over here. And do what we should have done in the first place. There we go. That's more like it. And over there. Whoop. And there we go. We have a nice shielded turret ready to mess with uh, the steez of incoming stuff. So, I should mention shield projectors generally you should add last. Uh, just to use up whatever leftover uh, power you have because they are optional. The devs actually spent a lot of time and effort uh, ensuring that these things would be optional and people wouldn't have to use them if they didn't want to. Uh, however, uh, they are a good idea, and I think just for the purposes of this video, and because I don't feel like setting them up independently on each side, I'm going to do a trick that I started doing uh, some time ago, and I'm going to make some two-axis shields, unless I might have... Might have counter -tar. No, I don't. Okay, we're gonna have to do it from scratch. No worries. So it's very simple. We're gonna go. Can we smuggle them in here? We actually can, but I'm not going to. Uh, we're gonna have a little three by three lump in here. Uh, it's going to be looking like. What is it gonna look like? It's gonna look like some objects to access turret. Here at the front. Whoopsie daisy. Hands are a little unsteady today. All in one local weapon controller. There is no point, by the way, to uh, control. Uh, if you're gonna put shields on a turret, um, don't make it a SeaWiz turret because it will aim at missiles and stuff like that. And um, yeah, you don't want that. Just point it at where the fire is coming from and it should be okay. So we're gonna do that. So if I do that. And if I put it on. Do I have all the... What is that? That is... I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the Sea Wiz. Um, yeah, let's put, let's put that on Group 5. Or I could actually walk down there. Oh, look. There it is. And let's just walk down there. This is why having a walkable ship is a good idea. So if I go here, you can see, hopefully, that... The shield is pointing, hopefully, in a spot that's actually useful. I might actually stick that on the underside of the craft. But yeah, you can do this with shields. And now we just need to put it in a little box. And let's just go here. Nope, that's the wrong one. There we go. There we go, there we go. Now, if I do that, we've got something that can hopefully just cover the superstructure. And you might be wondering, like, hang on, it's not projecting all the way past the hull. I don't particularly care if these uh, outer layers get shot off. It's kind of their job uh, to get uh, blown up, so uh, things don't be a bigger problem. And I should mention, this isn't exactly optimal shield uh, placement, what I'm doing. Also, I really should. Hang on, can I get away with this? Can I? Does this thing still aim in all directions if I completely surround it with third projectors? The answer might surprise you. It's yes. How can it be? I actually like the way this looks. I shouldn't, but I do. And I'm just going to go here and just stick. Whoops. I'm not even going to uh, armor that any more than I have to. Let's go 
here and what should we do? Let's do let's just do metal. And again, not the best idea. Let's see. Can we I'm aiming straight up at the sky. Is it doing that? Yes it is. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We've got our little uh, shield hub. Uh, let's go here. Do there. Do there. Alright, let's just double check that this is... Um... Alright, so yeah, it's... Uh... Caesar is um, controlling that. Very nice. So we're going to go over here now. Do the same thing, but pointing the other way. Honestly, this should get its own AI, probably, so uh, we don't get confused. Uh, but we're just going to do this, and this, and this. And we're going to... You could probably also do cunning things with spin blocks and just point them in the direction of the enemy without needing to use local weapon controllers. But... Uh, like, yeah, like, now, this will work fine for now, and really this is just a defense against um, any kind of heat shell or something that comes in here. Uh, because a single layer of metal is not going to fool anybody, really. Alright, so now the question is, uh, we need to see how well this does under power, because we've got a lot of engine power, uh, but we need to save some for propulsion, which usually, like I said before, you would add shield projectors last, uh, but in this case... Uh, we're adding them first, just so we get all the active defenses out of the way. So I'm going to save my vehicle. And we're going to load in... Oh, I don't know, what's something... Let's load in... I was testing against Onyx Watchcraft. Let's spawn in something... Let's spawn in an Alcazar. And so, I'm just going to have all weapons firing so we can see how much engine power this uses. Okay, so yeah. I think strength 5, maybe strength... Yeah, strength 5 was probably going to be enough. Uh, we probably don't want to go overboard in that. And you can see the shields... I mean, we could stick an extra shield turret, like, right in the middle here. Perhaps we should. In fact, yes, I am going to do that. Alright, yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's not the only thing we're going to do, by the way. By the way, by the way. Let's go here, just chuck you like so, and I could prefab that, but I want to be sure that I don't uh, block this turret off unnecessarily. And let's do what we've got here, just three, 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 three. And it's quite handy as well. By the way, if you're going to stick a shield projectors inside your turret caps, uh, this is why a heat decoy is actually really helpful, because shields run hot. And so anything aiming for hot blocks, including infrared missiles and just things set up to target hot things, they will, lay, they will zero in on your turret caps unless they have a, a more tempting target, like a heat decoy. So, that is important. So let's just do this. Let's just hop back where we're supposed to go. And yes, it looks like we have full coverage. This is almost certainly not going to be the screenshot I use for the thumbnail, but... Why not? Why the hell not? Okay, let's do this. Yes. Uh, by the way, shields on turrets used to be an exploit. It isn't anymore because just shield mechanics have changed. So nobody, nobody at me on the, on the internet about that. All right, let's see here. We're just going to test our power functions. So Alcazar. In turn, got no actually. So let's just look at our power consumption. Uh, thankfully, our uh, electricity generation is all fine and dandy for uh, for this. Why did I turn the UI off? That was silly. So we've got roughly mm, an average. Like it varies uh, depending on what the laser's up to. I actually need something there to put the lambs continually under pressure. So let's do that. Let's spawn in our friend... Where are you? It is the... What is it? It's... I think it's the first... Yeah, it's the frustration. Uh, I'm still so used to calling it... Uh, what do we call it? 
Uh, the Hornet's Nest, I believe, is what it was originally called. I will always think of it as the Hornet's Nest. Alright, so this should put the lambs continually under pressure. Except it isn't. Oh, it's because the... I love the way this looks, by the way. Wow. What the hell is going on? Okay, interesting. We're just going to say that we've got roughly 20,000 power left over. So, uh, you don't want your shields running all the time. Uh, because uh, that's not great. So, there is an ACB trick uh, we can use. Do we have any spare room in the AR compartment? Because it would make sense to stick them in there. We do. Hello, 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 hello. So, I do have a prefab for this, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to put these in a delightful shade of whatever that is. I can't actually tell. Oh, oh. So, this is going to be shield control. And the simplest way to do this is to just set uh, uh, whatever power, whatever drive it is. So, enemy range, range within 0 to 5,000 meters, uh, because 5,000 meters is plenty. That's the max this goes. Uh, if there's an enemy within, like, 5,000 meters, it will go to shield projectors and it will set the drive to, let's say, let's say 5. And... Uh, we go here if there's an enemy not there all right then it will set the drive to zero there we go and you'll notice that the shields have now turned off and now we get to see if my math is correct because this thing probably isn't going to be the fastest ship in the entire world all right let's just do we should actually just spawn in a whole mess of these things hold on and turn them all to god mode, otherwise we'll kill them too fast. Always a great thing in testing. So, go pew pew pew, lots of missiles, and hopefully we should be getting a lot of missiles actually getting near us. Um, rather annoying if they aren't. Right, are the lambs actually doing anything? Okay, we're doing something, there they go. Alright, so yeah, okay, good. That is the right... Uh, that is the right amount of shieldage uh, for this craft. Because we, okay, we have about 15,000 power, engine power left over. So I'm just going to drop the power of those down just a little bit. Just a smidge. Just in case. Because I do want this thing to go fast enough to be useful. Uh, the bare minimum speed for craft, I would say, is like 20 meters per second. Uh, any slower than that, it's just like, it's like desperately slow. Preferably, you want to go 40 meters per second. That tends to be better. And if you can go faster, you probably should. Because uh, if you're playing the Nidra campaign, the map is huge. So you don't want to go faster. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So let's go here. And let's just make the shields more pretty. Thankfully, there's a function for this. So we're just going to keep it nice and dark. Light color to all. Then we spawn in... Ooh, what should we spawn? Let's spawn in something fun. Spawn in an Alcazar, because the Alcazar is fun to shoot at. I have a permanent grudge against the Alcazar. And hello, hello. Yes. All right, good. Okay, good. I think that'll do for now. The great thing is that uh, once you're using ACBs to control them, shield power is quite easy to tweak. Uh, you don't have to set them all to the same uh, power, but um, you can. It's quite convenient. Let's save our progress here. Progress? Right. Will this be visible enough? Probably not. Anyway, we're making a huge mess of the Alcazar, and that's always fun. I love shooting this thing. It is my favorite thing. Alrighty. And low health, hell yeah. Alrighty, so there, we've got some shields on here. We've got basically the turrets and the superstructure covered. And uh, the rest of the ship is going to have to take care of itself, probably. So, um, probably should shield the missile compartments as well, because that's a expensive investment. But for now, uh, this will do. So, 
uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in building a complete ship, start to finish. Farewell.